go. All right, so now tell me who has X. Amy is X. Amy has three times as much as Brad. Oh, yeah. Yes, and Brad has what? Hold up a minute. You got don't interrupt me. Yeah. All right. I mean it, guys. You interrupted me and I'm about to go crazy. So one more time. Amy is three X, Brad is two X, and then you can take home. Amy has three times as much money as Brad. So how much does Brad have? Do we have any idea? Well, he has twice as much money. I didn't ask you that. I said, how much money does Brad have? X. So everybody's going to put X for Brad. What are you doing? Go. Hey, does everybody see this so far, man? I've got five minutes and already 50 interruptions. This is not how I'm going to operate. I'm just telling you. I'm not operating this way. If for something comes up, you got to interrupt my class. You got to go to the, it's a bathroom. Just go. All right. Stop talking to each other. All right. I, I've got a lot of pressure to, to make sure you are great at algebra. And classes are 42 minutes long. And there's lots of homework. All right. The less we get done in class, the more you have. All right. So I prefer to knock out snack altogether and just come right in here and get to work. All right. Honestly, but I was vetoed on that. All right. Now, listen, I'm going to lead you in the right direction. You with me on that? I'm asking you a question. One last time. No interruptions. How much money does Brad have? Do we have any idea? No. So Brad's automatically X. So now Amy is what? Three X. Beautiful. So that is perfect. Now, you were correct to say there is a problem here because Brad has twice as much money as Colin. Now, in my mind, Brad has twice as much money as Colin. Do you agree? So if I said Colin had 100, then Brad would have what? I want you answering. How much? 200. So what's the relationship? If I know Brad, how can I get to Colin? No, no, no. Tell me how to get from Brad to Colin. Yes, sir. There you go. You see what I'm saying? So Colin is X divided by two. You with me on this? Now, you, you're smart, Mr. Cappy. That's why I was kind of cutting you off because your idea was pretty good. You could have said this. You could have said Colin is X, then Brad would be what? And then A would be how much? Three times bigger. Three, no, three times Brad. What's three times Brad? 6X. You could have said either one of these ways, either one of those ways. Now, I need everybody who wants to be smart to look up there on the board and tell me, is X defined the same in each of those situations? No. X is who in the first situation? No, X is who in the first. But X is who in the th second? Yes. All right. Now, does everybody understand? Mr. Cappy was trying to direct me to this. I didn't want him to direct me at that right at that moment. All right. I go off a literal translation. I read exactly the way it is and translate it in. You with me? All right, does it matter which one you choose? Yeah. No, because then it says together they have $175. So what equation do you want to write for that, Mr. Cappy? Um, would that be, I'm going to be, uh, Okay, so tell me. Well, we'll do Six X. X plus two X. Plus X equals 175. You are amazing. Or... We could have said 3x plus x plus x over 2 equals 175. Uh, because that's not how I want you to do it. You can. You're smart. If you put that down, I wouldn't mark it wrong. You with me? All right. Here we go. All right. That's critical. And by the way, Nora, again, thank you for reminding me. These are, these are the important questions. Today's lesson is easy. This is the important stuff. So now let's everybody try number 28. 
a board 10 feet long is cut into three pieces. So what I did was I drew a board, all right? And that board is 10 feet, all right? Now I'm gonna cut it into three pieces. I'm gonna cut it here, I'm gonna cut it here. One piece is one foot longer than the shortest piece and two feet shorter than the longest piece. Oh, yeah. I got all kinds of stuff here, right? Okay. No, 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 I don't need your help. All right. So how many pieces do we have? Three. So there is a, the shortest piece. That's how I'd probably define it. And then there is the middle. And then there is the what? Longest. Shh, shh, shh. You haven't been in class. All right. Get organized and get with me. All right, so now you've identified the three pieces. It says now one piece is one foot longer than the shortest piece. So what's the shortest piece? Mm. What would you say? I would say X because I haven't defined the shortest piece. Do you agree? Now you can say X minus one, probably like Mr. Cappy, that might be correct. But when I'm looking at it, I haven't defined the shortest piece, correct? So that has to be what? The shortest I would say is X. Now it says one piece is one foot longer than the shortest piece. So that might be the middle or the what? Longest, right? But it says that it's two feet shorter than the longest piece. So it'd be the one what? So one piece is one foot longer than the shortest piece. So if I put the middle, let's just say I thought the middle was X plus one, right? How do you know that? Because the middle, the middle would have to be two feet shorter than it. Say say that again now. Nice. Come on, Mr. Cappy, because you're thinking good. All right. Tell me. One piece is one foot longer than the shortest piece. And and again, here's where the English comes in, which I'm not good at. And I'm going to change colors here. And one piece is what? two feet shorter than the longest piece. All right, so now I can see what Mikey was trying to tell me, right? You have to kind of read this carefully. All right, I do think this one's very tricky. All right, so what are you thinking now? What do you want the the three pieces to be? I think it's the longest would be, yeah, X plus one. The longest would be X plus one. Because I'm gonna put that right here. The middle would have to be and that would be two feet shorter, right? All right. So, so what am I comparing that to, though? Yeah. And one piece is all right. So let's go back to Mikey now. Mikey, explain to me how you set it up. Because I think I think this right here is not the best way. So tell me what you decided, Mikey. Okay. So let's do this. All right, so one piece was X, all right? Then what? The shortest piece is X minus two. And then the longest piece was X plus one. Hold on one second, I'm gonna let you, cause you're always good too, all right? And I'm gonna let you talk too, but I wanna see if this is correct. All right. Now, does everybody agree in this situation right here, the longest piece is X plus one? If I was just looking at this X plus one, X and X minus two, right? The shortest piece is definitely X minus two. The middle is X and the longest is definitely X plus one. It says that one piece is two feet shorter than the longest piece, which should be X plus two. Ooh, we're going to get to that. Good. Right. So you see, hold on a minute. I like it. Mikey, you see what we're saying, right? It says here that one, um, one piece is one foot longer than the shortest. 
and two feet shorter than the longest piece. Tell me, Wilson, what do you think? Um, so I got, um, I think I put the shortest as X. The shortest is X. Uh, the middle, wait, The middle is X minus two, I think. And then the longest is X plus one. That's what I mean. It can't be. Yeah. But, but in that situation, then the shortest piece, the middle piece is not the shortest, right? The middle oh, yeah. is smaller than the shortest, yeah. right? Nora, tell me what you're thinking. So I saw there's one piece I saw. The shortest is X. Middle is x plus one. And x plus one is x plus three. Let's see if that works. Yeah. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. We're going to see if it works. Well, I'm uh, Just give me a second. All right. One piece is one foot longer than the shortest. So does everybody agree? This piece right here, one piece is one foot longer than the shortest piece. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. And one piece, which is still nice because she's still referring to this as the one piece, is two feet shorter than the longest. So then the longest would have to be two feet more. So that's why it's X plus three. All right, does that make sense to everybody? Now, as long as the shortest like i can tell this one isn't correct because it's not one more right and this one is incorrect because the shortest is not the smallest tell me oh oh yeah you're right yeah. you see what i'm saying right again this was very tricky uh oh sophia tell me i'll let you talk in a minute the middle is X, and then you are amazing, girl. That's exactly correct. Do we agree that the two right here highlighted are exactly the same? No. Yeah. No, they're not the same. What? Well, why aren't they the same? Okay. One is X, one is X minus one, one is X plus one, one is X, one is X plus three, one is X plus two. But the relationship is the same. Austin, what? Uh, is the X plus one the one in the sentence that two feet four and one feet? Yeah, you could say that. You with me? So again, what we're saying is X and X minus one. This is one shorter. Do you agree? This is still one shorter. This is two more. This is two more. You with me on that? All right. So our equation then you could have said is X plus X plus one plus X plus three equals 10. Or you could have said X minus one plus X plus X plus two equals 10. Those are your two equations. All right. All right, guys, that that's a a, a a brain teaser. If you thought that through and you're able to do that, I'm sure you're going to do great on the test. Well, no, no, no. I, I, you're, you're telling me things I don't care about. All right. We're interested in just setting up the equation. That's it. That's what we've been doing. Next week, we're going to solve all these. All right. We're going to solve all the word problems, but not right now. All right. So again, I, I feel like that's a really great exercise thinking all right. Hopefully you're concentrating on the math, not daydreaming. All right. Trying, making a mistake. It's not a big deal. This is the only time we're going to be going over this, right? Right. All right. Here we go. Now we're on section one five. Here we go. Hopefully the whole first page is about done. All right. So I want the opposite and the absolute value. All right, remember, absolute value for those of you guys is just talking about distance from the origin. All right, so if I say, what is the opposite of eight? Just let me go with this. Let me let me give a quick explanation and I'm gonna go around the room. Name the opposite 
and the absolute value. So the opposite of eight is what? Negative eight. All right, I know you know that. Then I want you to write the absolute value of eight. So you remember what the symbols are. Those are the symbols for absolute value. And the absolute value of eight is also what? Eight. Absolute value is referring to distance. Distance is always positive. All right. So we'll start over there with Sophia and we'll just work our way around and see how uh, well we're doing. So the opposite of negative three is three. And then I want you to write the absolute value of negative three is also three. Thank you very much. Evelyn, number three. Negative 28 and then absolute value of 28 is 28. We are perfect. Number four, is there really an opposite of zero? No. All right. And the absolute value of zero is also what? Zero. Zero, zero does not have an opposite. All right. And of course, the absolute value from of zero is zero. All right. Charlotte, you're on number five now. Exactly. 0.75. And then what is the absolute value of negative 0.75 again? 0.75. Perfect. All right. Here we go. Mr. Cappy, opposite. Four and two thirds. The absolute value of that is four and two thirds. Perfect. All right, here we go. Next. What do I got? Yeah, look, we're paying attention. We're going around, up and down the room. All right, that's what your job is. Pay attention. Go. Five eighths. Five eighths. Absolute value of negative five eighths is what? Five eighths. All right. All right, here we go. Number eight. Um, negative 61.439. Perfect. And then that, that's equal to um, the absolute value. Of yes. All right, we're good. All right, I think that's easy. All right, we all got it. Oliver, I'm on not even there yet. Come on, Oliver. All right. 91.2, absolute value of negative 91.2 is 91.2. All right, who's up now, Wilson? Is this you? Are you on number 10 or did you do number nine? All right. No. Friday number eight. Okay, so yes, thank you. Up top, here we go. If N is a negative number, then negative N is a? Well, think of a negative number. Give me a negative number. So then what would negative N be? No, no, no. What is What did you just let N be? Exactly. So what's the negative of that? See, okay, so here's what I'm trying to show you on this. It's okay. What I'm trying to show you is just because there's a negative there, doesn't mean the answer is negative. What's the opposite of a negative number? So the answer is just what? All right, so if N is a negative number, then negative N is a, yes, is a positive. You see what I'm saying? That's what I was trying to show you up there on the demonstrations one through nine. If N is a negative number, then negative N is a positive number. Some people think just because there's a negative, it's automatically negative, which we now know is not true. Yes, exactly correct. All right. So Mackenzie, you're up. That is correct. Very good. Sorry, guys. Okay, number 12. Believe it or not. Tell me. Zero. Yeah, zero. Now, again, I just said zero doesn't really have an opposite, right? Yeah, it is neutral. It's called the absence of value. All right. 
So a real number that its own opposite is zero. It's the same thing. All right, thank you, sir. 13. Well, tell me the absolute value. Hold on, Wilson, you guys. I, I, don't, I don't know what y'all are doing. All right, Jacob, I don't, I don't know what you're doing. All right, I have no idea. All right, what you're making with your pencil, I have no idea. It doesn't matter to me. All right, I, I'm, I'm, it's, it's a different year. All the little games are going to be put aside. I've got a lot to teach you. You're big enough to sit there for 40 minutes and listen to me lecture and participate. No, no, they're saying the absolute value of what is negative. Oh. The absolute value of what number is negative 10? Say it. Oh. You're right. There isn't one. That would be no solution. Whenever you take the absolute value of something, it's going to be what? Positive. So is it possible for distance to be negative? No. So 13 is no solution. All right. Here we go, Mikey. How many solutions are there for absolute value of C equals zero? Number? Yes. How many numbers can be zero? One. All right. One. There is one solution. All right. And the absolute value of zero is zero. All right. Tell me the absolute value of what number is eight? How many solutions do you, what are they? Um, negative eight. Yes. There are two solutions. You could say negative eight or positive eight. Wait, what? All right, here we go. Now let's go around the room, Max. You're up. Number 16. Number 16, three plus eight is 11. Negative 11, that is correct. All right, Oliver. Four. Yes, yeah, 17 minus 21 is negative four. Then there's a negative out in front. So the final answer is four. That's what I'm saying, Oliver. I know you can do 17 minus 21 faster than that. You're wasting my time. We're not doing it. You're up, 18. Tummy, go ahead. Four. I'm happy. All right. If you're not sure, you can tell me. What are you multiplying, Oliver? Just what? Yes. Negative one times negative three is three. That is correct. Yes. Tell me. What did you have? What were you confused on? Yes, it is absolute value. That's what these bars are right here. Absolute value. You don't just make everything positive first. All right, next. Yes, seven minus 12, negative five, beautiful. All right, back over, Sophia. Yes, because are these absolute values? No, they're not. All right, so that's correct, it is four. Evelyn. Okay, you got some fractions here, kiddo. All right, I'm waiting on you. All right, what's the absolute value of two-thirds? And what's the absolute value of three-fourths? All right, so you're up. I need you to tell me two-thirds plus three-fourths. Or I'm sorry, minus three-fourths. 2A? 12. So two-thirds is how many twelfths? Yes. Now notice how I'm doing it. I'm just creating one fraction minus three fourths is how many? Nine. Final answer. Close. Eight minus nine is what? Sometimes. Yes. Thank you. Negative one twelfth. 
All right, everybody should be great with the fractions. All right, everybody should be great with the fractions. All right, here we go. Tw oh, decimals now. What are you thinking? First of all, I want you to tell me, is it going to be positive or negative? Negative. All right. Negative 2.55. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Anybody have any questions with the decimals? All right, Mr. Cappy, what am I doing here? Am I adding or subtracting these fractions? You'd be adding. You would be adding them. Exactly. The right, to how many? Yeah. 10. All right. So the first one is how many? Uh, that'd be negative three and five over three. Right. Let's do that. Negative three and five tenths. And the other one would be what? Negative five and one. What? How many? I'm oh, sorry, eight. Eight tenths. I'm happy with that. So, so far we have what? That'll be negative. That would be eight. You'd have to yep, negative eight and what? Negative eight and 13. Yes. 13. Right, so all together now that would be uh, negative nine. And three. you're awesome. I thought it had to be uh, but it was subtraction. But but you see why you don't, right? Because you told me you were adding them, right? You're adding them, not subtracting them. Mm -hmm. All right, that was an important problem right there. All right, very important. All right, 24, you should be good. Say it again. Now, here's your mistake. Listen, please do me a favor. Yes, that's right. 12 minus 1. Do the 12 minus 1 first. 11. Now you're subtracting more, so it's got to be 10. All right, please, I'm checking your mental math right now. 10.04. Soon we'll be able to use calculators. But right now, you got to show me you can do it without a calculator. And then you show me you can do it without a calculator, we get calculators. All right, I've got them sitting right back there. All right, here we go. 25. Wilson, what am I doing here? Um, adding or subtracting? Adding. On 25? Oh, subtracting. Subtracting. Now, remember, I told you, put the bigger one on top first. Yeah. So I have one and four fifths minus three eighths. Common denominator, please. Uh, 40. So that would make the first fraction how many? Thirty-two. Thank you. The bottom would be. Um, yes, sir. So my final answer is. Shh, shh. Don't interrupt. Good. Is that the final answer? One and seventeen. One and seventeen over forty. Okay, Oliver. What? How did you change eight to forty, Oliver? Um, You're right. Multiplied by eight. Multiplied by eight. That's how so I got the thirty-two. So that's how you got the thirty-two. No, that's it. I'm still confused. With what? So you have one and thirty-two over forty. Minus, minus what? Fifteen fortieths. Okay, who are we on? I did. You did that one? All right, next. Are we adding or subtracting? Adding. All right. How much? How much? I didn't hear you. Yeah, I want yeah, I want you to tell me the answer. You can go ahead and do it and tell me, and then I'm gonna show you how I want you to do mental math. Close what? What did you say, Nora? What is negative fourteen point ninety four is the answer. Let's check and see. Negative 12 and negative 2 is negative what? 14, right? 50 and 80 
that's going to make it negative 15.39. You see that, right? All right, that's how I do it. All right. I don't I don't put the 2.89 underneath. I just don't do that. All right. I want you guys to be able to just tell me negative 12 and negative two is negative 14. 50 cents and 80 cents is another dollar 30. All right. So I want you to be able to tell me that's negative 15.39. All right. Again, good review of fractions here. All right. Who's up for 27? Who's doing 20? Okay. So now are we at, well, obviously we're adding. So what's the common denominator here? Okay, let's see if you remember this. Okay, you said, what was it again? Yes, ma'am, and, and that's correct. So my final answer, good, which is? Now count up from 18 to 20 is what? And then, yeah, you see what I'm saying, right? All right, 13 to 18. I'm really trying to help you with your mental math if you're having a little trouble with that. All right, 12 and 13 18. Anybody have any questions with those fractions? Nobody? All right, that's good. All right, some more fractions here. Okay, I try to throw you off a little bit here, Ryan. So what do I do? Yes, it is in fact zero because the absolute value of negative one half is one half, and then there's a negative out in front. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. Continue on. 2.4, good job. Thank you, very nice work, man. Well, what, I don't see about You having trouble subtracting yeah, 2.4 okay. and 3.1? Yeah. So count from 2.4 to 3.1, that would be 0. 0.7. <laughs> 31 minus 24 is seven, Oliver, today. 30, Mike, you're up. What do I, what I think you should do? Make the fraction in the decimal. Well, yes, but I prefer what? Yeah, because 0.25 is easy. What's that? Yes. So that's going to be this. Come on now, don't mess this up. Mm -hmm. So what is that final answer? Mm -hmm. He's got it. What are you talking about? Oh, wait, it's, ne it's negative. Yes. Negative eight. Negative eight. Yeah. Negative eight. Yes. Shh, shh. Leave him alone. You got it. Oh, negative nine. Yes. Negative nine. Wow. All right, Mike. All right, negative nine is good. All right, anybody have any questions with that? All right, let's continue on. Okay, so now division, we have to do what? Shh. We're going to sound math. We're not doing sixth grade. Multiply by the reciprocal. Two-thirds times, what's the reciprocal? Uh, negative nine. Uh, negative 10. Yes, negative 10 over 9. Does anything reduce? Um, no, so final answer. Leave them alone. Let them work. It's negative 20 over 27. Yes, negative 20 over 27. Negative 20 over 27. All right, so we're leaving this multiplication up to your great mind, Max. Um, so you got off to the side, do 2.6 times 3.7. Of course, everybody is doing 2.6 times 3.7. 780. 920, 962, see if I'm right, 9.62. 
That's not us, is it? No, it's not us. I think it is us. Yeah, but this is a different year. All right, so you're got you're off the hook there. All right. Oh. All right. So all you got to do is finish that up for homework, guys. Hey, and I'm telling you right now, if, if we don't waste five or six minutes, all right, we might get it done. I'm looking at you. You messed around. I never have to call on you. You, uh, you were messing around at some point. And that's not normal. So I 